My previous video was about anarchy. Do not confuse, do not conflate anarchy with anarchism. This video is about anarchism. And I would like to start with a quote. The thin and precarious crust of decency is all that separates any civilization, however impressive, from the hell of anarchy or systematic tyranny which lie in wait beneath the surface. This was written by Aldous Leonard Huxley, a British writer, 1894-1963, last century. Still valid. Let's start with an overview of the theories of anarchism. Politics, in all its forms, I believe most of you would agree, has failed. The notion that we can safely and successfully hand over the management of our daily lives, the setting of priorities to a political class or to an elite is thoroughly discredited. Politicians cannot be trusted, regardless of the system in which they operate. And that is because they are human. <laughs> No set of constraints, checks and balances is, has proven to work and mitigate politicians' unconscionable acts and pernicious effects these have on our welfare and longevity. Ideologies from the benign to the malign, from the divine to the pedestrian. Ideologies have driven the gullible human race to the verge of annihilation and back. Participatory democracies have degenerated everywhere into venal plutocracies. Socialism and its poison fruits, Marxism, Leninism, Stalinism, Maoism, every ism, these have wrought misery on a scale unprecedented even by medieval st standards. Only fascism and Nazism compare with these ideologies unfavorably. The idea of the nation-state culminated in the Yugoslav succession wars, wars, for example. So it is time to seriously consider a much derided and decried alternative, anarchism. Anarchism is often mistaken for left-wing thinking or the advocacy of anarchy. It is neither, of course. If anything, the libertarian strain in anarchism makes it closer to the right rather than to the left. Anarchism is an umbrella term covering disparate social and political theories, among them classic or cooperative anarchism, postulated by William Godwin and later Pierre Joseph Proudhon, Proudhon radical individualism, Max Stirner, Religious anarchism, Leo Tolstoy, anarcho-communism, Kropotkin, and anarcho-syndicalism, educational anarchism, Paul Goodman, and communitarian anarchism, Daniel Guerin. The narrow and familiar form of political anarchism springs from the belief that human communities can survive and thrive through voluntary cooperation, without coercive central government. Politics corrupt and subvert men's good and noble nature. Governments are instruments of self-enrichment and self-aggrandizement and the reification and embodiment of said subversion. The logical outcome is to call for the overthrow of all political systems as Mikhail Bakunin had suggested. Governments should therefore be opposed by any and all means. And that includes violent action. What should replace the state, though? There is little agreement among anarchists. Biblical authority? Tolstoy, anyone? Self-regulating cooperatives of craftsmen? Proudhon? A federation of voluntary associations? Bakunin? Trade unions? the anarcho-syndicalists, ideal communism, Kropotkin, no clear answer. What is common to this board is the affirmation of freedom as the most fundamental value. Justice, equality and welfare 
cannot be sustained without freedom. The state and its oppressive mechanisms is incompatible with freedom. Figures of authority and the ruling classes are bound to abuse their remit and use the instruments of government to further and enforce their own interests. The state is conceived and laws are enacted for this explicit purpose of gross and unjust exploitation. The state perpetrates violence and is the cause rather than the cure of most social ills. Anarchists believe that human beings are perfectly capable of rational self-government. In the utopia of anarchism, individuals choose to belong to society or to exclude themselves from it. Rules are adopted by agreement of all the members or citizens through direct participation in voting. Similar, it's very similar to participatory democracy. A little like Switzerland, holders of offices can be recalled by constituents. It is important to emphasize the following, and I'm quoting from Ted Honderich, uh, the Oxford companion of philosophy. Anarchism does not preclude social organization, social order or rules, the appropriate delegation of authority, or even of certain forms of government, as long as this is distinguished from the state, and as long as it is administrative and not oppressive, coercive, or bureaucratic. So anarchism is an organizing principle. It's not opposed to organization. It just looks forward to different kinds of organization, different types, an alternative. Anarchists are not opposed to organization, law and order, or to the existence of authority. They are against the usurpation of power by individuals or by classes, groups of individuals, for personal gain, through the subjugation and exploitation, however, however subtle, however disguised, of other less fortunate, less informed people. Every social arrangement and institution should be put to the dual acid litmus tests of personal autonomy and freedom and moral law. Personal autonomy and freedom and moral law. These are the criteria. If the social arrangement or the institution fails either of these two, it should be promptly dismantled or abolished. So a social arrangement or an institution must satisfy the demands or the requirements of personal autonomy and freedom and of moral law or be dispensed with. But anarchism has internal contradictions, like most ideologies. Anarchism is not prescriptive, it doesn't provide prescriptions. Anarchists believe that the voluntary members of each and every society should decide the details of the order and functioning of their own community. Consequently, anarchism provides no coherent recipe on how to construct the ideal community. And this is, of course, the Achilles heel of anarchism. Consider, for example, crime. Some people are really evil. <laughs> Nothing to be done about it. What about crime? Anarchists of all stripes agree that people have the right to exercise self-defense by organizing voluntarily to suppress malfeasance and put away criminals. Yet, is this not the very quiddity of the oppressive state, its laws, police, prisons, army, are the origins of the coercive, coercive state and its justification, not firmly rooted in the need to confront evil and crime, to provide safety, personal safety, otherwise. Some anarchists believe in changing society through violence. Are these anarcho-terrorists, criminals, or are they freedom fighters? If they are opposed by voluntary, grassroots, vigilante organizations in the best of anarchist tradition, should they fight back? and thus frustrate the authentic will of the people whose welfare they claim to be seeking? 
Anarchism is a chicken and egg proposition. It is predicated on people's well-developed sense of responsibility and grounded in their natural morality. Yet all anarchists admit that these endowments are decimated by millennia of statal repression. Life in anarchism is therefore aimed at restoring the very preconditions to life in anarchism. Anarchism seeks to restore its constituents' ethical constitution, without which there can be no anarchism in the first place. This self-defeating bootstrapping leads to convol convoluted and half-baked transitory phases between the nation-state and pure anarchism. This is the root of anarcho-syndicalism, some forms of proto-communism. Primitivist and green anarchists reject technology. They reject globalization, capitalism, as well as the state. And yet globalization, technology and capitalism are as much in opposition to the classical hermetic nation state as is philosophical anarchism. They are manifestly less coercive and more voluntary too. And this blanket defiance of everything modern introduces insoluble contradictions into the theory and practice of late 20th century and early 21st century anarchism. Indeed, the term anarchism has been trivialized and debauched. Animal rights activists, environmentalists, feminists, peasant revolutionaries, technopunk performers all claim to be anarchists with equal conviction and equal falsity. We need to reclaim anarchism. Enrico Malatesta and Volterrain de Clare distilled the essence of anarchism to encompass all the philosophies that oppose the state and abhor capitalism. They called it anarchism without adjectives. At a deeper level, anarchism wishes to identify and rectify social asymmetries. The state, men, the rich, they are respectively more powerful than the individual, women and the poor. These are the three inequalities that predominate out of many. It is the task of anarchism to fight against all of them. This can be done in either of two ways. One, by violently dismantling existing structures and institutions and replacing them with voluntary self-regulating organizations of free individuals. The Zapatistas movement in Mexico is an attempt to do just that or by creating voluntary, self-regulating organizations of free individuals whose functions parallel those of established hierarchies and institutions, the dual power uh, um, approach. Gradually, the former, the voluntary ones, will replace the latter, the coercive ones. The evolution of certain non-government organizations follows exactly this path. Whichever strategy is adopted, it is essential to first identify those asymmetries that underlie all other asymmetries, the primary asymmetries versus secondary asymmetries. Most anarchists point at the state and at the ownership of property as the primary asymmetries. The state is an asymmetrical transfer of power from the individual to a coercive and unjust social hyperstructure. It has a monopoly on violence. Property represents the disproportionate accumulation of wealth by certain individuals, income inequality. Crime is merely the natural reaction to these glaring injustices, say some anarchists. But the state and property are secondary asymmetries. They are not primary ones. There have been periods in human history and there have been cultures devoid of either or both. The primary asymmetry seems to be natural. Some people are born more clever than others. Some people are born stronger than others. The game is skewed in their favor, not because of some sinister conspiracy, but because they merit it. Meritocracy is a foundation stone of capitalism. Because these people can force themselves, their wishes and their priorities and preferences on other people because their adherents and followers believe that rewarding the leaders will maximize their own welfare. 
Aggression and self-interest are the cornerstones of all social organizations. It is a, this primary asymmetry that anarchism must address.